What's going on YouTube? Uber Man here. I decided I was going to do a video just a little bit differently. Um, not necessarily a, about Uber at all, but um, it does have a little bit to do with Uber. Um, I wanted to talk about moving from an Android device to an iPhone. Um, I just did the that very thing. I came from a Samsung Galaxy 5S and I mean I, I've had I've had almost every Android phone imaginable guys. I've I started out with some little tiny phone. I can't remember what that thing was. Um, a Motorola Flip or, or, or something like that but it had started out with Android 1 point something. It's old as dirt. Um, and I had an iPhone before that. Um, I had the original iPhone. I mean, basically, I have moved through just about every Android and iPhone device that has ever been made. Um, but I've always stuck with Android. Um, I've I've really stayed true to Android, and it's not because I'm a fanboy. Um, it's something I wanted to clarify. I don't believe that Android is better than iOS, and I don't believe that iOS is better than Android. Um, I think that they both serve their purposes um, quite well for the user and that's really what it's all about. It's user experience and user preference. Um, I will not sit here and agree with or say that uh, one is better than the other. In my opinion, um, I've always believed um, the iPhone is a much more elegant and sleek device. I mean even the original iPhone was just something to, uh, I don't know if you guys remember it, but uh, the original iPhone was that was gorgeous. I mean, when you consider all the other smartphones, you know, back then we had we had Palm Trios. I don't know if you remember them. I, I had those as well. Um, Palm Trios were just ugly. They had that fat antenna, and it's they they really didn't work well. Um, so I have always believed that the iPhone was a beautiful phone. Um, the problem for me was there was just a, a lack of software. Um, a lack of applications um, that I could get on Android and, and even later on when apps caught up with iPhone when the developer, I mean it's been quite a while, there have been plenty of apps out for the iPhone for quite some time but a lot of the apps on iPhone require you to pay for them whereas on Android you can get them in the market for free so you know and the reason, the primary reason I've switched over to an iPhone now, um, there, there's a couple reasons. Um, one of them is because of Uber, and this is really the only part where Uber is going to come into this equation, uh, the only point where I'm really going to talk about Uber at all. Um, Uber was originally designed for the iPhone, and every time they have updates, um, every time they improve something, it comes out on the iPhone first, because I'm sure the majority of their drivers are still using the company provided iPhones. So of course they're going to take care of their own first and they worry about the Android users later. So if there's a glitch, and believe me, there have been glitches um, on the I uh, yeah, iPhone, on the Galaxy S4 and the Galaxy S5 that I've experienced, and it takes quite a while for them to come out with an update. Whereas I've already had two updates on my iPhone. So, you know, they're regularly working on the iPhone software and it seems like Android's on the back burner. So that's really the main reason for me right now to switch from Android over to iPhone is because of my job. It's because of Uber. Um, the app on the iPhone works better. It's more consistent and you know that's what I need. Um, the Android app works fine. There's there's just been several occasions where I'll hit um, accept a trip and for some reason it just freezes. And I don't blame this on Android. I don't think this is a problem with Android. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Android and a big fan of Apple, but I'm a fanboy of neither. Um, I choose what works best for me. And I believe iPhone's going to work better. Now, let's get Uber out of now that we got Uber out of the way, let's move on to some other things. Um, I'm a big big Android user. I've been using Android a long time and I've played with Apple a little bit, you know, so I've got a little bit of usage out of Apple. I love the way Apple products look. Always love the way Apple products look. Um, I also love the fact that the majority of the time, as long as you don't jailbreak them, um, they work. They, they just work. I mean, it is basically one platform across every iPhone device. I mean, they all run 
a very similar version of iOS. Um, it, it looks about, I mean, I know for a lot of people that would be a, a turn off. You know, everything pretty much looks the same. It works the same. A lot of people would call it boring. Um, I call it productive. <laughs> okay. Um, when I first started using the iPhone, um, I don't believe you could even change the backgrounds. Um, if I remember correctly, you had to jailbreak the damn thing just to be able to change the background. I mean, they were, they were tight. You couldn't, you just, you couldn't change anything. Whereas Android, you could change everything. Well, that's changed. That's been changed for a long time now. And, and Apple continues to loosen their grip on the operating system to allow users a little bit of flexibility. Now, the reason, um, the reason iPhone has kept such a tight hold of it is because the, the more variables that you throw into the operating system, the more you have an opportunity for things to not work properly anymore. You know, when you have every device out there running the exact same thing and the user gets very little control over it, it's going to work. It's going to be a very reliable and stable device until you get people that jailbreak them and then complain that it's unstable. Well, that's you don't jailbreak them because that can cause a lot of instability. Um, you're basically hacking, hacking into the operating system. You're hacking into files. You're it's it's. I used to, I used to do it. Okay, I did it for fun. I used to I used to unlock and jailbreak them. In fact, I charged people to do it. Um, I did a lot. Um, I won't do it anymore. I, I just won't. I saw my own personal devices become very unstable from jailbreaking, and I just it's it's not a good thing. You know, I want my device to work. That's that's its job is to work. Um, now, if you look at benchmark numbers, um, and and I'm not a huge fan of benchmarks. I mean, they're they're good to give you a a general idea of how one device performs over another, um, but you will see that the uh, the iPhone six and six plus has a tendency to outperform um, Android devices. And again, I'm not trying to trash Android. Okay, I don't want anybody coming on here hating on me because they think I'm I'm a hater of Android. I'm not. I, I'm I believe in what works and what works the best for me is what I'm going to go with. And right now, that is the iPhone six plus. Um, I believe the reason that I, uh, Apple, the iPhone 6, is running better, it, it's not because the specs of the of the uh, iPhone 6 Plus are, are better, because they're really not. It's it's got a processor that's that's underclocked compared to um, an iPhone. Uh, good God, man, compared to a uh, Galaxy S5. Um, but it's 64-bit architecture versus Android, which is still running 32-bit architecture. But really, I, I believe what this comes down to is optimization. And, you know, the thing about Android is is it's not like iPhone, where it's just one operating system across all devices. Yes, it's one Android operating system, but there are so many variations. Basically, if you were to go with a, what I like to call a virgin Android, um, you know, like the, I believe the Nexus, um, I don't, I guess they still make them. I've been a Samsung guy for several years now. I haven't really followed uh, Motorola or, uh, you know, the Google Nexus. I don't even know if they're still making them anymore. But um, they always used a virgin um, Android operating system. So everything across those devices were the same. When an update came out, you got it right then. When you get into Samsung and HTC's, you know, with HTC, you've got Sense, which I loved it. I thought it was a, a great overlay, basically. Um, that's really the, what I consider um, Sense and uh, TouchWiz to be. It's just an overlay. But the problem is, as you start adding things on to the top of that operating system, you're affecting the optimization of it. So everything that you add over the original Android operating system it's going to take time. Now I know these are fast processors and these things have a pretty pretty good amount of memory so they can handle it but the fact is you're performing more tasks to do the exact same thing that you could just do in a virgin operating system that doesn't have all this crap overlaid on top of it. It's just taking the, the operating system has to go through more the device itself is having to process more just to do the same thing just so that it can look fancier. Um, so it's not as optimized as an Apple product. Apple likes to keep things simple. It's elegant. It looks good. 
you don't have a whole lot of control. You can change a lot of things, and like I said, they're getting better, but I really think it comes down to the operating system's ability to optimize. And if you have an Android device with all kinds of overlays, and then you have an iPhone device that may be a little underpowered compared to an Android device, it all comes down to how the operating system has been optimized for the device itself, for the hardware inside of your device. And it really looks like iPhone has got the edge on that. Um, I'm going to stop talking about that because I know it's kind of boring. It's a little technical. I'm, I'm trying to keep it to where everybody can understand it. Um, and then the last reason I've decided to switch is security. And, and honestly, this is another big one. This is almost as important as functionability for me. Um, with an Android device, I'm not going to get into how, but you can wipe the system out. I don't care how safe you think your Android device is. Give me an Android device. I can push three buttons, and I can wipe that thing out. I don't care if you've got a fingerprint. I don't care if you've got a password. I don't care if you've got a silly pattern on the screen. It doesn't matter. You hand me an Android device, I will wipe that sucker out doesn't take but a few minutes. I don't even need a computer to do it. I can do it right from the device. So, you leave your phone in a car, you leave your phone at the bar, um, you leave your phone at your house, and somebody comes over and they decide, you know, hey, they're going to pick it up and walk off with it. Guess what? They can either find somebody to do it, or they can do it themselves if they know how, and they've got a free phone that they can turn around and sell and make some money off of. Now, granted, you've got insurance, it, you know, if you're smart, like me, if you could afford it. Um, someone runs off with my iPhone or my Android device, you know, I'll get it replaced. $100, $150. Uh, but that's not the point. It's a huge inconvenience. Okay, so let's start with somebody walking off with it. With an Android device, I can wipe it out, have a phone just like that, literally. With an iPhone, it's not that simple. If you've got um, Find My iPhone turned on, which, again, if you're smart, you do, um, that thing is officially a brick. I've got my fingerprint registered, which I think is great. Uh, the Galaxy S5, the fingerprint reader on that thing sucked. I didn't use it. I went back to a... a four-digit code. Um, I mean, it never worked. You're sitting there, swipe, 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 and it, like five times in it would lock itself. I, it's just pain in the ass. The iPhone, I mean, I, I know there's probably a million videos of this, guys, but, you know, look, sorry. I can pretty much put my finger anywhere I want on this thing, and it just unlocks. You know, boom. No, no swiping. I, I can do it from different fingers. I, I can turn my finger sideways. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It, it just works. That's the thing about iPhone. It just works. And they're beautiful devices. I'm a tech geek, and I think iPhones are just exquisite. They are beautiful, beautiful, elegant devices. Um, I don't think Steve Jobs would approve of the new form factor, either one of them, or the curved edges. I, I don't I don't think Steve Jobs would, would approve of what they've done. I don't think, I, you know, whatever. We're not going there. Um, I did go there. We're not going there. Um, security is really important. Someone can walk off with your Android device and they've got a free phone. Someone can still walk off with my iPhone. Absolutely. But I can promise you this. They can't get into it. I've tried. I, like I said, I'm a tech guy. I have played around. Guys, I've got, a, I've got this broken. It, it works. Okay, it's got a broken screen up here. It's got a crack, and um, it's a it's an iPhone 5. It does work. It does power on. It's a it's a brick. I have tried for months to unlock it. It has a uh, it had turn my uh, what do we call it a uh, find my iPhone activated, and with every different way I've tried, I've tried so many different ways of getting this thing restored. I was even hoping I could download a custom. Um, basically custom operating system, um, a hacked operating system to override it. It can't be done, guys. Um, if, if it can, I can't find it and I can't do it. And basically, it turns it into a brick. So people that steal your iPhone can't use it. And most people that are stealing devices know that you can't use an iPhone. Um, it's not worth stealing because honestly it's it's worthless it doesn't work you can't get into it you can't unlock it it can't be used as a phone an iPod nothing it is locked down security is a huge reason why I've gone to iPhone you don't get it with Android you just don't get that security with Android and uh, you do get it with iPhone and there is absolutely 
no way around it. Um, other than that, guys, you know, cameras on, on both uh, Androids and, and iPhones are very good. Video quality is good. It's, every, everything else is just is, is pretty good. I love it. And now that iPhones have gotten bigger, you know, where they're more comparable to a, a Galaxy S5 and a Galaxy Note, um, you know, I've decided that it's just the best of everything. Um, you do have to make some sacrifices. You're going to sacrifice a, a lot of customizable options that you can um, utilize on your Android device. But in my opinion, security um, security alone is worth it. So that's about it. Um, I love my new iPhone, guys, and that this is coming from a true blue Android user. I mean, uh, years with Android, and I'm really enjoying the iPhone. So that's just my opinion. Feel free to, you know, hate away, because I know there's going to be a flame war going on here in just a little bit. But, you know, what do you think? What do you think about that? Give me a holler, guys. Take care.